Festi fam, the time is now. Festival Goers Unite. Welcome to the Festi Files, where we highlight all the creative personalities that collectively come together and form what we call the festival experience. Mm. So if you're watching this at home, if you are a vendor at events, if you are a performer at events, if you are the main stage artist at an event, we all contribute to the experience. My name is Desmond Beristain, CEO and founder of Bestie, the festival smart band. And today it is a really exciting day because we get to switch it up. Um, we've primarily focused on EDM, you know, electronic dance music uh, with the Festi files. But what one of the things about music festivals, it incorporates an eclectic variation of styles and musics. And each, each genre, you know, interacts and, and inspires other genres that stem from there. So it's all intertwined, all interconnected. Today we have a, an underground hip hop legend from the group <laughs> Dilated People, oh, yeah, LA native, Los Angeles native, like uh, myself. Uh, with you have these iconic tracks such as "From Worse Come to Worse," my people, <laughs> you know, worse comes to worse, um, and then the massive collaboration with uh, Kanye West. Right, this right, way, right. ladies and gentlemen. We have Raka Iris Science. Welcome, Raka, to the Festi Files. Thank you, man. And before you, before we move on, the, the last, you know, uh, the last time I talked to John Legend, it's been a minute ago, but he was actually on that song uh, "This Way" that Kanye produced. That was the first. That was like when he first got his record deal. You know, like that was yeah. like he, he had done a lot of background work before, but that was like one of his first thing, one of the first things that he did um, as a solo artist. So uh, whenever I hear. Uh, by featuring Kanye West, I always got to throw a legend in there too. Cause he, we go do interviews, he'd be like, Hey, nobody gave me a shout out on the, on MTV today. I'd be like, you know what? I got you. This is like, he's such a humble, cool cat, man. It's lovely. Oh, yeah. It's great to see him be a superstar right now. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Shouts out to John legend. Yeah, I sure. still remember the times. I mean, back then I was in high school and we would listen to, you know, everything from well, Kanye was collaborating with John Legend, put out so many tracks when he, he collabed with Little Brother, Consequent, just everything with whole good music and, sure. and the vibes and everyone collectively putting out very soulful music. Um, so, yeah, shout out John Legend. Hey, John Legend. <laughs> I appreciate Festi it. Files. We, we got yeah. the We got to get him on here one day. What up, Legend? Come down. <laughs> you, Desmond. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, um, yeah, you're, we mentioned they were both LA natives, right. and today we kind of just want to talk about, you know, right now is a very important time for the music industry. Um, right now, people are at home, and we're just trying to shed positive light, you know, allow people to self-reflect while you're at home, but still understand that even though we aren't able to physically attend festivals, the music festival experience, uh, the spirit is still there and alive. And, and we have to keep that spirit up because, Absolutely. you know, not just keeping it up, but learn how to elevate it so that once we're back out there, we can all be just a little more appreciative, a little more cognizant of, of each other and, yeah. um, you know, uh, more positive in general. Sure. I mean, I think that the nature of festivals, some of it is, um, I guess some people like to go there and get bumped into and sweaty and it's like the physical, the physicality of it. But for the most part, I think a lot of it has to do, you know, aside from just fresh air or whatever is, is just human, is just interacting with people, fellowshipping with people that are about the same music as you, being able to see, you know, a lot of energy and creativity in one place and, and, and the, and the massive energy vibe that comes off of that. And even though you can't capture all of it and, you know, you know, the digital world is not a true, uh, all like a tr it's definitely not a replacement for for the for the you know for true life i guess for physical life um there's still an opportunity to capture a lot of that experience like you said and to really bring it together for for the people that are there for the fellowshipping and the camaraderie and the you know meeting new people and, and sharing spaces and communicating they're just different ways that it has to be done right now but it can still be expressed for sure yeah, for sure. Well, let's talk about that. Let's talk about right now. Um, one thing that, that I've seen and, and from the whole you know electronic music side of things, they've yeah. pushed out uh, live streams, uh, but that has caught on. And right. that has been a way to keep people engaged and, and build, continue to build that relationship with, with you know, the fan base. Mm -hmm. um, people like Questlove, he's doing every other day, he's doing something live and just interactive. And the other week he talked about Prince and and stuff yeah. like that. So just talk about what you've seen so far and that initial response sure. to everything going on and how it's kind of uplifting. Definitely. Um, 
obviously, you know, D nice was one of the people that really stepped in and set it off. D nice being, you know, a, a very respected, um, uh, member of the hip hop community and one of the people that heavily contributed to the culture and uh, to rap music, the musical side of it, especially being a member of Boogie Down Productions, KRS One's crew, and Skylar Rock, rest in peace. But D Nice has really stepped forward as a as a as a major photographer and a major DJ in the scene. So someone that's creating culture and motivating culture, pushing forward, but at the same time capturing it and chronicling it and sharing it with the world. So um, for him to be um, right when this whole kind of thing really it was really solidified and kind of kicked off, he had one of the the big um, streams where he was able to really you know get a lot of people looking and and I think from there you, you've seen a lot of other people really step in. I, I know Quest Love for sure. Shout out to Quest Love, that's big bro right there. Um, um, he's done a lot of stuff as well. You have the versus battles um, with like uh, uh, you know of course Teddy Riley and Babyface, the famous, but you also have Premier and RZA who set that off. You know, so um, it, it, it's really cool. I mean, you, you know, when you when you think about it like that, it's not that odd because you have people that are used to working with technology to be creative and interact with people and and engage people and and mo and, and unify people through technology, through creativity, but using technology as a as a as a as the device to do that modern technology. And so for them, this is a lot a lot of this is like an extension is is they're rocking the party and if the party's online that's they got to play good music keep the pace live and do what they came to do make sure the selection is tight the blends are right you know what i mean and that's and i think that dj's taking that that step forward really showed a lot of the other a lot of other artists in the same industry and other industries how it could work how they could translate that for themselves so i think it took dj's being like techno technological scientists sound scientists and people that are usually at the forefront of of applying technology, you know, to the culture, to the craft, to the artwork. It took DJs to really get in there and start turning buttons and, and plugging things in. And and you, as you see in 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 these battles and some of these things, there's still it's still a work in progress. They're still trying to figure out how all this can work. But the desire is there. The desire is there, and the understanding that hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of people are tuned in to experience this, and they want to be a part of it too, just like they would go drive stand in line go deal with the dirt expensive bottled water whatever the case is whatever the, the things that they consider problems they still they're willing to push past that for for what the payoff is which is the, the experience and i think that like you were saying earlier it's not like we were saying earlier the experience is still available we can still deliver that experience even if it's not necessarily physically in one place um geographically we can be still focused in one space you know on a certain level yeah, for sure. And, and as you mentioned it, just appreciating the, you know, the experiments that are taking place, right? Because every day is a constant transitional period for artists. So when Premiere and RZA jump on and they try a versus and, you know, you're get you are getting to experience it firsthand and be there. Uh, it's just something cool. And from that will stem more things. And Absolutely. That stems more, and it's just kind of how it perpetuates that momentum in a positive way. Um, right. Talk about so let's talk about DJs and how you you know from the from the early '90s to now have you have seen the transformation where right. a DJ is a person in the back to now you're just seeing a DJ being literally the main main headliner in front in front of hundreds of thousands of people. Well, it, it's interesting, um, uh, and, and also before we switch out to that, shout out to Travis Scott too and the whole Fortnite thing that just went down. I mean, it, the, the possibilities are unlimited once you open your mind and the people are ready to, when when, the, when everything lines up right like the possibilities are unlimited on that on that level that was huge. Uh, but speaking about djing it's actually you know i grew up before i got into making music and and was a part of the community on that level i was a fan you know i was a fan i was a student just like anybody else i was listening to music i was watching um rap city or yo mtv raps or listening to 1580 k back in the days when i was a little kid or power in the beat and other other stations and then KD came back, but I was a fan. So I was watching DJ since the eighties. And even before that, and, and the people that, that kind of brought me into the scene, they educated me to the fact that hip hop was created out of the DJ. And a lot of that also comes from just dance hall culture and other things, it goes deep, but hip hop culture, you know, um, was basically the, the, the sound of hip hop culture was created out of, out of DJs. Um, DJs built that bridge. They would bring in MCs to come be their vocalists. They would bring in people to come and do their flyers. They would bring in people to come dance for them or, or spin the breaks to keep the party live. 
but it was all centered around the DJ because the DJ was like, if you go deep, like, the, you know, kept was the drummer, the person that kept yeah. the rhythm of the vibration of everything. The rappers were the griots, the, the poets and everything. That, and that's, that's, but the rhythm, that, that universal tone, that's the DJ. And I think that um, as things moved on and the rap, uh, rap music w needed to fit into uh, record label systems, they needed a lead singer and they needed a band. They needed to be able to make somebody a star. So they kind of came in and was like, we needed to fit like this to make it work for them. And they, you know, it was what it was. Rappers, a lot of times the egos are where they are. So they, they weren't necessarily arguing to keep the DJ where the DJ was supposed to be. They were happy to take the bigger check and move to the front of the stage. And it got to a point where the DJ wasn't even a DJ anymore. The DJ was like, was almost literally a stage prop. There would be, they put like laser discs on on the things just to make them shine more in the light. There's no music. They weren't even plugged in. You could look at like old concert footage, old TV shows, the DJs in the back of rap group, you know, spinning for rappers for like a good block of years. And you could look and be like, they don't even have the things plugged into the, they're scratching the whole thing. And there's not even a scratch in the song. They're just back there. Like it's like a, a stage prop, you know? So as I'm looking in the background, I see, um, I see a, a setup right there and some headphones and everything right there. Like, yeah, you know, that's that's the drum, like that's the universal drum that you know the DJs are keepers of the pace and the rhythm. So to see it come full circle is what I see it. Like I see it's come back to what the truth of it is, and that the rhythm is the rhythm. You know, different people can write. That's in dance hall, they got different rhythms. You know, what I'm saying so one person will drop one rhythm, and a bunch of people are toast to tear it up in different, a bunch of different ways. But it's about that rhythm. Like how can this? This is setting the tone and the pace. And I think that DJs have done that historically and helped create hip hop culture. And, and most you know modern musical cultures um, by sharing that rhythm and spinning that rhythm. And so to see them now be able to be celebrated again, um, there, were, there was always a line for certain like club style things and whatever the case may be, but especially in something that's really um, defined, I guess you could say like the parameters are defined in what hip hop DJing is, like what it means as opposed to you know, DJing has been around as long as turn as long as the discs have been around. You know what I mean? Like, but turntableism and hip hop DJing, like they're they're it's pretty narrowly defined what that means. And so when you got to see people like Hubert um and the scratch pickles, you know, Apollo, Shortcut, uh, Mixmaster Mike and people like that, you got to see the executioners and the people like that over on the East Coast. Um beat junkies down in LA like our that's that's where we're from you know world famous beat junkies and people like that that are that were able to say you know all respect due to all MCs all respect due to everybody else but this is the music we don't need a rapper to make a song we don't need to do anything other than what we do and just do that well and they created a lane and that lane has also can now connected with the global DJ movement and you've seen a lot of people that that should be at the forefront of stages that or, or at the forefront of uh, or at the top of bills that historically haven't been, but now those bases are there and it's, it's great to see them be celebrated. For sure, for sure. Well, you know, one of the things that I quickly learned when uh, we kicked off this podcast is we, was, we started talking about certain topics that, hmm, let's see, had, hadn't been spoken about too often in the community, right? Whether it's attending an event and, and safety precautions, whether it's, it's dealing with, uh, you know, the sobriety at an event or what to do in the case of various emergencies. But another thing that we've been doing is even as simple as reflecting on when we go back to festivals, how we're not littering and we're just being cognizant and aware of the trail we leave behind us. Right. Mm -hmm. The other thing that has kind of been the divisive uh, with, within the, the community is this whole thing where hip hop artists and EDM and EDM festivals and hip hop festivals, as opposed to meshing together, right? So uh, even last year, there was some banter online where one festival saying saying one thing and another festival saying the other thing. Mm -hmm. Why do you think there is that uh, kind of friction? You know, because we've already seen them, and you you've been a part of these amazing festivals. Uh, off the top of my head, iconically, what dilated peoples was 2015 Sasquatch. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, sure. and and you yeah. see like how beautiful it is when, when, when you can, you know, when these two come together, why do you think there is just that kind of stylistic uh, oppositions or whatnot? Because I, I even have cousins that when I say right. EDM, they're like, uh, but then, you know, vice versa. Maybe right. I, I think a lot of it has to do with, I mean, like you go to high school and there's these groups of kids hang out on this bench 
and these groups of kids hang out on the quad and these groups of kids hang out by the student store eating Chico sticks or whatever. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like there's different groups of people that feel like they need to self-identify and connect with other people that identify the same way. There, you know, a lot of this is youth culture, even though it's growing, it's getting older, it's based in a lot of youth culture. So people are pretty defined about this is what I like. And especially when there's any type of questioning or whatever, people kind of tend to double down and really be like, well, you don't get it. This is me. That's you do that. And, you know, to be fair, there's a lot of people in all sides that 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 feel like they want to be a part of something that's more um, special, more unique that that other people don't get. You know, they, they people that get offended as soon as their friend likes something, they thought that there was a secret. Now they don't like them anymore. Like there's a lot of weird little things that go in, in, in human nature, human psyche. Um, but I think a lot of it has to do, to be perfectly honest, just with branding and marketing. Like, you know, we dilated, we grew up with like doing a bunch of raves and everything too. Like we would go do Nocturnal Wonderland, Narnia. We would go oh, wow. do like big raves and there'd be like a mil, I don't know how many people, but it felt like a million people would be there. So they'd be like, you guys are going to go do the hip hop tent or whatever the case is. Like they'd have a special setup. We'd be like, all right, whatever. The check is good. Like, and we're not tripping. We'll go there, rock a little tent. But when we get there, it, it it's not tent like you would think of in California or the States as like the little tent. It's like Europe, European music festival, like, the tent it might be five ten thousand people in that tent just for hip-hop and a hundred thousand people at the whole festival and so for us we were all about just built we could rock any crowd we could go anywhere we weren't really trying to just always go preach to the choir and a lot of people feel like they want to go perform for people who are already down for them and that's cool i'm, I'm not saying we ought to gotta always challenge ourselves at every step we want to perform for people to sing along and everything too but we don't we don't gain our identity just by being pat on the back, patted on the back by people who are already patting us on the back. You know, we want to build new bridges. We want to go into new places. We know that if we're doing a thousand seat hip hop club one day, but the next day there's a hundred thousand people in one place to go do, do something that is made on the same equipment, that there's still turntables on stage and microphones on stage, mm -hmm. they use samplers, what, because the beat permit, because it's a different BPM or, or it hits a little bit differently than, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. Why then when somebody does it and it catches on, they might call it something else, but it's really like, okay, well you just, it's, e, it's EDM, it's not even one thing. You know yeah. what I mean? Like EDM is like a bunch of different things. It's like, to a certain extent, like certain rappers make electronic dance music. Like they're making music, you know what I mean? If you define it that way. So I think a lot of it just comes down to people trying to identify and, and be special. And, and maybe a lot of it is just, it's coming from a good place of really being supportive of the community that, that they're in wanting to see that thrive, wanting to protect that against other people who might yeah. take shots at it. Because we would go do the rave shows, but that didn't mean that the rappers weren't talking crazy about the ravers. Like, look at the pants, they dress like Dr. Seuss. They're, they got necklaces and bleeding flavors all over their t-shirts. Like, they're sweating, they look like, you know what I'm saying? What are they, what's up with the big Disneyland hands or whatever the case is? And we'd be like, I don't know, bro, but 10,000 people are gonna be right there rocking with us. Like, you know what I mean? And, and, and there's, you know, if there's any fights, it's like people fighting with themselves because they're like on something. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing like, it's not like, a, a real issue like yeah. so we just loved that early and as we moved into touring later like touring with dilated um we would do a lot of european festivals we did a lot of festivals all over the world but europe especially and we would be on bill like sometimes we'd be like i remember doing rock um rock um ring in germany and yeah. it was dilated peoples metallica motorhead corn and slipknot you wow. know what i'm saying like and we rocked it. Like, I don't like we're not supposed to rock it because it's like a hard rock show. Like we hard rock, too. Like, you know, what I'm saying like it's an EDM show. We EDM, too. Like, you know, what I'm saying like, we just yeah. we just move. You know what I mean? It's a crowd to rock and we find our sweet spot. And ultimately, you know, um, people, when presented with something unique, even if it's unexpected, if it's done right, they'll appreciate it. And like, maybe it's a palate cleanser. Maybe it's something like, oh, I didn't expect this. This is cool. Now let's get back. Where's Lemmy at? You know what I'm saying? That's what it was. I was chilling backstage with Lemmy. Rest in peace. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's like, you're gonna go on right now. You know what I mean? Like it's like, yeah. you know what I mean? It's like so. As artists, we get along a lot better than is presented by marketers, is presented by advertisers, is represented in the press. We might all be backstage hanging out, and our crowds might not even like each other, but we're best friends, chilling, exchanging numbers, talking about what can we do a remix together, whatever. And we just do what we do. And I think that's that's kind of what it is. I think it's easier to segment when you're trying to sell sell something to people. It's easier to segment and for you know as far as um the amount of the scale of work that you're gonna have to do like if we're talking about trying to bring a lot of people to this thing you have to talk to a lot of people if we say it's just this 
that is who we're talking to, then our work is a lot of our work is done for us. For sure. And, and that's kind of the beauty of music festivals. I mean, we all have a vivid experience of attending a music festival and you have your, your own set list and you're like, oh, I'm going to see this artist and this artist. Right. And then you're walking in route to from one stage to another and you hear a roar. Right. A whole different direction. Yeah. And you go, man, I, I got to go see what's going on over there. And then, yeah, you walk over there and boom, it, it's dilated people. And you're like, damn, what? They're rocking this. Yeah. And now all of a sudden you're experiencing a new flavor. And, and that's the beauty of the music festival. I'll tell you like this. I've been on stage many times rocking. And, you know, there's a split second between songs. You're like you're talking to the crowd. And all of a sudden you hear like, yo, who's rocking? I'm gonna look like who's rock? Who else is rocking right now? They'll be like, someone else just started. Like, all right, let's rock. I'm trying to go catch the end of their set. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? Like, thank yeah. you for staying with. And when you see artists running around backstage and then you look at the backstage, you might see any your favorite artists that you wouldn't even expect to be hanging out together, all hanging out together, watching, you know, somebody else on stage. Like I remember running up to the stage is like dilated, I think rhyme say, uh, atmosphere and, you know, Mac Miller, rest in peace. And we're all trying to jockey for position to see De La perform. Yeah. And, you know what I'm saying? It's like that kind of thing. We're all, you know, like we, we appreciate each other. We know what it takes. Like, you know, as, you know, as martial artists, everyone doesn't have to have the same style. If backstage you represent, you know, you, re you respect that warrior spirit, then you appreciate that someone else is doing something different. You can learn from that. You know what I mean? You could collaborate and build a new bridge with that. But I think it's just art. A lot of times, it's the, the 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 people that are pushing the messaging, and also the bases themselves that feel like they have to choose when they don't have to choose. You know, yeah. you, don't, you can have a favorite and still and still love the other one too. Like you don't have to just because one food is your favorite doesn't mean you have to eat only that food forever. You know what I mean? Like you could like I love that when it comes around, I'm gonna have two helpings, whatever. But I also love this and that as well. And I think as artists, we we look at it that way. But more often than not, yes, yeah, true artists, we look at it that way. But I think. The fans are kind of being asked to choose, and I think that, the, or the, the 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 base is being asked to choose, um, a lot of times by advertisers, and um, yeah, I think that that helps spark a lot of that and, and mix with some of their own natural protective nature to to come up with something that kind of divides instead of uh, br builds bridges. Yeah, well, let's let's talk about that. Where you know, even for myself, I grew up skateboarding. You know, I'm here listening to some emo rock. And then uh, I went to middle school and, and, and I went to a middle school where everyone's listening to hip hop, looking at me like, man, what's up with this guy? He's wearing leather chucks to school. I'm like, I don't know. Like, like, and then the next thing I know, they're trying to get me into basketball. And I, I actually ended up playing basketball and I chased that dream. Uh, ended up playing in the Philippines and Mexico. Oh, nice, nice, nice. And um, learned, just learned so much, immersed. And, and that kind of, then my cousin called me one day He's like, come back to the States. When, you, when you're visiting, I'm going to take you to a music festival. It's going to change your life. I'm mm. like, all right, sure. Let's see what's up. When I went to the, this music festival, literally that happened. I felt the same type of energy as if when, when I traveled to the Philippines to play. It's like immersing yourself in a whole new world and understanding that, you know what, there's going to be different cultures, different, um, you know, vibes. But ultimately, like, it, it, it's, it's all intriguing. So, so right. maybe talk about that because... To watch, as I just mentioned, like emo rock was was big, but then now in the hip hop culture, there was a, a real surge of um, what's called like emo rap. That's what they, they coined the genre. And there are a lot of amazing artists, you know, and rest in peace to a few of them. And, right. you know, that that's one thing on this podcast. I do like to go deep because some of my favorite artists, you know, and I look at them as kids and I'm and people look at me like a kid. Yeah. But I'm like, man, gone too soon. Right. Um, and they're pushing out this, this beautiful artwork. What does that say about the culture at this time? And kind of just reflect some light upon that. Because, I mean, you know, you just mentioned Mac Miller was an artist. But we got, right. you know, the legend Juice World himself. And right. then you have know, other artists, Little Pete, XXX. And they're right. pushing out this wave. And it really, you know, when it touches that many people, that, right. that means that there is a message that, you know, there's something there, right? When you have millions of people responding to something, that means there is something there. Yeah, I mean, it's either um, like a grand delusion or it's, some, it's based in truth, you know what I mean? And I think when you're talking about people that are like at this age um, with this much on them, um, hip hop has historically been to a large extent a defense mechanism. Um, um, it's been an opportunity to express something that needs to be expressed where there weren't outlets, you know, there may be outlets to express it in the past that didn't exist. Um, I think when you move into what's happening 
what what has happened is you're seeing that the artistry, the people aren't afraid. Like you had people that were were brave enough to to be gangbangers, to talk, to start very real beefs, to talk about government issues, to talk about everything else, but they weren't brave enough to talk about their own mental health. They were ready to die in the streets. They could kick two words that rhyme that could kill people or get people killed, but they wouldn't talk about their own depression, their own drug addictions, their own child, you know, uh, abuse as a child or their own, whatever the case might be. You know what I mean? And I think that what's happened is you see a different type of bravery. You see a different type of um, willingness to put it on the line. And that's vulnerability. You see vulnerability, you see a certain level of honesty that didn't exist before. The, the, the honesty that was really being pushed before was this is reality rap, this is the reality of what goes on the hood. So we're gonna talk about the shooting and the killing um, and the people going to jail or whatever the case might be. But people die in the hood every day that didn't get killed by gun violence. People take their own lives in the hood every day. People OD in the hood every day some of which because they got caught up in drugs because they were partying and living fast, some of which they, because they turned to drugs to mask some kind of pain or, or, or erase or try to you know put something behind them or get through something. So I think when you talk about the artists that you mentioned and other people that are moving on, um, you talk about, you know, and I was talking about Atmosphere, who mm -hmm. helped, you know, you know um, Slug and those guys, Idea, Rest in Peace. Mm -hmm. um, you're talking about people that aren't afraid to be vulnerable, that aren't afraid to be looked at as soft. Like when you are when you put yourself out there as vulnerable, you're saying, I know some people are gonna look at me as food right now. I know some people are gonna look at me as a victim right now, as an opportunity right now, because they think that I have, and everyone's supposed to be stoic or, or even worse, be like gangster, be aggressive, be hard, like flex before they can even come at you and put a, an aura out that, you know, and I think what you're talking about is are people that are brave enough to be vulnerable and brave enough to be honest. And I think that that movement also shows a great shows great progress in the artistry and the craftsmanship and the songwriting mm -hmm. um in the poetry in the lyricism in the in the in the progression of lexicon however you want to measure it in hip-hop culture that exists too that's not where the spotlight is always shining that's not always the easiest thing to sell by the people who are selling product who aren't concerned about necessarily the the, the effects that aren't necessarily concerned about um uh the, the the direct effects on the community or the person that's doing it they're just moving product if we're going to get if product is just going to be in the pipeline it's good to see that honest honesty is out there that vulnerability is out there that balance is out there mm -hmm. and i think that that's what we're saying is just people that are like i don't i'm not a superhero i don't want to write superhero raps if i'm supposed to be talking about myself then why am I only talking about how much, how how much, how well I could fight, or how many girls I could get, or how much this I can get? There's, is that is that the reality of the situation? Like otherwise, I'd be a pro fighter and a whatever, like a, I don't know, whatever. Like you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. the reality is everyone lives a, a balanced life on certain. You know, most of us live a balanced life on a certain level. So to speak out of balance is to bring things out of balance to yourself. And I think that, you know, a lot of those people, a lot of those kids were in pain. A lot of people were in pain and you get a chance to see that that vulnerability that we all deal with that very few people are comfortable sharing. For sure, for sure. And um, I mean, I'm just going to say it. When I listen to some of their tracks, it's, it's you know, music is therapy, right? Whether yeah. in various forms, whether it's the beat, you know, just, just getting you right. feeling a certain way um, or whether it, it's the, the vocals and what they're speaking upon. So kind of maybe speak upon that because, you know, I mean, what if someone's like, oh, why are you listening to that? The message is negative. All right, but to but to someone else that that's maybe their reality, right? But if you're listening right. to it and um, you're saying, yeah, you know what, there might be this and that because there's only three or four minutes to convey a certain message. But to me, yeah. somehow I'm able to resonate with this and, and and honestly turn positivity out of it or draw inspiration from it. Right. Talk about that because I feel like that's the well. I mean, is the Bible negative? Is is the Bible negative? Is Aesop's fable negative? Because the stories are harsh stories where there's actual. Here's what happened. Here's why it happened. It's not that the songs are negative. It's that the language is harsh. Mm. It's not that the message is negative. If you, The message is what you extract from it. So if you listen to it and all you hear is cussing and, and gun talk or this or that or drug talk, and that's what someone, all they get from it, that's the message that they're getting from it. That's, not that's, the, that's what they're extracting from it, extrapolating. That, 
doesn't mean that that's the message that was intended. That's the vehicle to get a message. If it's a crazy movie and it's a lot of killing and dope dealing and at the end, the bad guy loses and the good guy wins and there's a, a um, there's some sort of accountability and there's something like that. Was the message do drugs and shoot people and all that stuff? Or was the message, if you do that, at the end of the day, there's going to be a reckoning. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If people can't get past the language, people can't get past the energy to get to the message, they're not even judging the right thing. They're not even, they're not even uh, critiquing the right thing. If you're saying, let me have a clean version of this, and if you could read that in prose and have that in poetry and have those, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the cuss words censored or whatever the case is, and you could just read what is being said here, then you understand you might not get the energy, you might not get the language, you might not understand the vehicle, but what's coming at the message that's inside of that is maybe very real. Maybe these people are talking about whatever. There are plenty of songs, plenty of songs that go way back, decade, generations, that people think are love songs, that people think are really nice songs, that th- people think are about this or about that. But when you read the science, this song is really about that. And it's like, oh, that's darker than I thought it was. Mm-hmm. Or that's, that's well, that's way, I thought that, there's, an actually a, there's actually something to that. I thought it was just about this, but it's really a, a commentary on, on social issues or whatever, if you, if you understand the real message. So as artists, our job isn't always to be deliberate. I mean, excuse me, to be, uh, yeah, I guess you could say to be deliberate. Like, if we have a message, we don't always have to present it in a way that the people are going to always understand it. We, if a painter paints an abstract painting, he's trying to elicit a feeling, an emotion. He's trying to trigger something. He's not saying somewhere in there is a literal house. He's saying maybe that's my home. And he's saying these are the feelings I get in my home. And somebody else might be like, oh, I feel I feel constricted over here, but I feel like I can move out over there. Like, they're like, yeah, this is, my, this is how I feel about my house. But you're not supposed to be like, okay, but where's the front door? You know what I'm saying? Like, this is, this, this is art. You know what I'm saying? So if his art is saying this is the way I'm expressing my message, then you can't say no, you're not. Yeah. If he's bullshitting, if he's spinning and he's like, he's in trouble, he's like, no, 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 what I meant was that's going to come to light. But if legit, he's just saying, this is my pain. This is my story. This is what I've been through. This is what I'm going through. This is what I'm trying to get past. These are the demons that are chasing me. And if he's saying, this is what I feel, I feel like I just want to party and do drugs. I feel like, but it's somewhere in there he's saying, but I don't. You know what I'm saying? But I, this isn't right, but this is how I feel. And you, he's sharing, you know what I'm saying? Like, so the people that don't get it, I think they're getting caught up in the language. They're getting caught up in the energy. They're getting caught up in the lexicon. They're not really taking the time to really understand what the message is for them to say that there is no message. For sure. And um, or it's a negative message. You know, it, it's more, bla- it's, I guess you could say, uh, whether it's a stigma or, or just blatantly shown and, you know, in hip hop culture, right? We're dealing with a lot of loss a lot of danger, a lot of struggle, a lot of overcoming. Um, but and then the whole thing with the EDM culture and, and the music festival culture is, you know, half half the time people attend, they're, they're on something. They're inebriated in one way, shape, or form. And you know what? That's almost one of the reasons that prompted Festi, us to create right. this device that allows you to, you know, track the whereabouts of your friends without cell right. phone service. Because sure. let's say you're trying to find someone and it, it takes hours, you know, and and potentially they could be you know uh, on something you want to if, if you can shed five ten twenty thirty minutes and get there sooner that could be the difference uh, one second could be the difference yeah. or, or if you're that person if you're just lost and, you, and you're hoping someone could find you you're like yeah. i don't even know where i'm at i don't even know who i am right now hopefully this magic thing that's strapped to my wrist i don't even recognize it right now but hopefully that beacons the you know i mean like so and i was I, you know as this thing was going on i was talking to um uh, to Nick and Samaras, you know, obviously mm-hmm. the people that were, were that connected us here. Um, and he was talking to me about Festi, about the idea of Festi. This is right before all this stuff started happening or the whole COVID-19 thing jumped off and it, it really hit hard. And I was like, oh, that's a really good idea. Um, as soon as this thing happened, I was like, uh, the first th- thought that came to mind was like, oh man, that Festi thing is, that's gonna be tough. About a, I, I put it, I, I filed it away few days later it occurred I was like you know what hold up a second I, I was I think I was on the phone with with Nick and Samira about something and I was talking to them, I was like you know what it just occurred to me is that Festi existed when people had to walk around trying to find their friends they get close to their people somewhere close to their people and that allowed them to recognize their people like if they're getting within a certain amount of space like oh, okay I'm in the I'm in the same room as them they're here like oh there they are you know what I mean but what happens 
when things get back to a certain sense of the new normal and the festivals are back open again, but there's mask rules or these other things. Mm -hmm. Now you don't even have the eyesight ability. Now something like this is even more important. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because now you can't even, it's not even, unless you're going to just recognize somebody, oh, I know, know your eyelashes, whatever the, you know, like I know the shape of your, like unless that's going to happen across the room and something, it's even more important because you don't, you lose one of your senses, half of half of the face right then to be able to visually identify. So at a time when people have to be masked up and then all the original issues already existed, you know, there's there's definitely even more of a, I think, a need for something like this, you know, than, than less of a need. So like, it's yeah. all perspective and it's all really understanding what the, not just a business opportunity, but what the what the true problems are that you're solving, and understanding that you know in that there this may solve even other problems in that. So I, I immediately my my thing sw switched from like oh man those guys man they were right there to being like hey those guys are right there you know what I'm saying like they're back right there again you know what I mean like they, like just that quick like the, the perspective shift on what it was and what it solved and how it could, and not to say that's a marketing angle but just to say like there's even a reason for this even more so in certain in certain places in certain cases and then like you said to be able to take it and say this is also not just about necessarily just about the technological the, the hardware on the wrist this is about the community this is about um uh the overall experience that's coming forth uh, uh even as people are setting up um, digital marketplaces to mm -hmm. be able to be a part of that and to create opportunity to create uh solutions for people when it comes to communicating with each other or e-commerce or spreading information or helping to set up other platforms for other people to move in that space as well mm -hmm. like it just opened it up and i think that that's that to me reveals opportunity and shows that it's not just a you know a pet rock i mean i'm sure that the pet the people the pet rock family is still spending spending you know 70s pet rock money you know what I mean, very well but this isn't just a a, a a gizmo situation i think this is a uh, a piece of hardware that's actually attached to something that could be much bigger. So yeah, yeah, the pity immediately went away. You know what I'm saying? Like we went yeah. back to excitement again. I was like, oh, this is this is still great. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers, cheers. I mean, that's that's the thing. We have had a couple of festival organizers on the podcast as well. And we're talking about the same thing. And the question I ask is, well, what's it gonna take for us to get back out there? You know, whether right. it's a year from now, 18 months from now, or mm -hmm. six months from now. And the whole right. thing is a, a concentrated effort and and a increased uh, you know, attention on, on what, on sanitization, on being at a festival, on uh, the liabilities around it, on making sure that security and all these things. And as you mentioned, it just kind of goes even more hand in hand with what we're doing. Cause we're like, this is supposed to enhance your experience and give you peace of mind. Peace of mind is going to be the utmost importance at events. So sure. yeah, for us, we're just like, Nope, our, our goal remains the same. We're just going to continue to build our brand in other ways because it's funny if you want to talk about the marketing side. Yeah. When we pushed this product out, got an immense response from the community, then all of a sudden, the next thing was, will it be ready for EDC? Will it be ready right. for Trump? Will it be ready right. for this? And we're like, hey, we just proved the concept. Let us push right. this to the market. And so now with us not having to really ask that question and yeah. people not having to really come at us and say, I need it for this festival right. because we're all at home. It gives us an opportunity to showcase like who we really are. Festival right. goers making something for other festival goers and build sure. our brand in other which ways. So and that's what kind of happens, right? It's either you're, you're going to sit on the sideline or you're going to get up and make things happen. And yeah. uh, maybe talk about that from going back to hip hop, how, you know, you, you mentioned you have um, the iconic track, with, with John Legend and, and Kanye mm. and to see them, you know, evolve into what they've been able to become global icons themselves. Um, but it's all, it's all a snowball effect, right? There are people before them, there, you know, it, it, people like dilated peoples who, who trigger this and, and it just all comes collectively. And, and that talk about that, that spark and seeing somebody that, you know, you know, get to this amazing success, success level, um, mm and just how that makes you feel. Because one thing I will say is there are so many music festivals and it got to the point where I'm happy that certain people I know are going to music festivals or rocking music festivals and right. doing that. And I don't necessarily have to be there experiencing it with them every single time. Yeah, um, it, it, this isn't a competition. You know what I mean? Like if, if you, if, like me growing up, I grew up in graffiti crews. I grew up in hip hop, you know, and, and, and rap groups and graffiti crews around a bunch of skateboarders and, and rappers and gang area, you know, gang situations. I, I grew up, in, I grew up in like typical 
you know, as an eighties kid in LA, you know what I mean? Like that was all, that was all just mixed up. Like you were just all the outcasts were just lumped in the way. Um, so you grew up in a, in a, in a situation like that and you know, extreme, you end up knowing extremely talented people. Um, and you want and everybody wants everybody to succeed before anyone succeeds. Everyone wants everybody to succeed. Right. Um, so when I get around my people who are talented people who I've, I've known since that time, so it's for many years, maybe not since the eighties, but you know, since I was a kid, but I've, I've known for many years, I've seen them push through um, and make it work. Like, because it's not a competition, I'm, I'm, ex I'm extremely happy for them. You know, um, I'm, I'm supportive of them because we're a community. Uh, I think what ends up happening is a lot of people, they start to feel like there's only one prize. And we have to go, you know, if you, if you think about it, like, what do you want a platinum plaque? What is that a million records in America? And there's about 8 billion people in the world. Like, why are you stepping on each other's throat for 1 million? You know what I'm saying? Like there's 7.9 other, you know, billion people in the world. To, so um, I think what we, what we've done, and even in my group, like um, as I moved on to um, focus on much more on the, on the business side, doing marketing, brand development, business development, even managing and booking dilated, running um, uh, Empire Agency, which is a booking agency um, for time, uh, and then moving over in, in cannabis, doing the, you know, becoming market, director of marketing for DNA genetics for a time. Like, as I move into those things, evidence, my partner, evidence from dilated, continues to push forward as a, daily as a, as a, as a full-time artist. Mm -hmm. So for me, like, I love it. I love to see it. You know, like, I think it's about everybody living their truth, everybody finding what they want to do and supporting people in that pursuit and just maintaining your own account, being accountable for what you do. And ultimately, you know, as respectfully as possible, holding people accountable for what they're doing, you know, if, as it pertains to you. Um, so when all these things are happening um, and I'm seeing different people making moves, creating festivals, I'm seeing different people that have been underground that are suddenly getting into the festival circuit and able to like, cause once you get into the festival circuit and the, and the festival promoters know like this person can rock, this, this group can rock. They know what they're doing. They know how to handle this crowd. It's not gonna be a problem. They'll put you in front of that 10,000 people. And then next thing you know, like I think the biggest show Dilate has done was probably Woodstock Poland, which was the, the uh, like a couple of years ago. They, they still do Woodstock Poland every year. And I think that show was probably, I think it was a million people over three days. And I wow. think our stage was like 250,000 people or something like that. Wow. So, you know, it, it gets really, it gets really crazy. You know, um, doing Hip Hop Al Parque in, in Bogota in Colombia, that was like 100,000 people, you know? So things like that, you, you start to recognize like, this is, this is massive. Like this is a city listening to Worst Come to Worst right now. Like this is a, yeah. There's a quarter million people right now watching Babu, you know, do his DJ solo right now, or, you know. So, you know, that is, is magic, man. And I think that that to see other people tap into that, it's I think it's a little bit different because in Europe and in parts of Asia, South and Central America, in different parts of the most parts of the world, a good, you know, uh, even you go to uh, Australia, New Zealand, there's festival season. There's like there's a time for festivals, like it's celebrated. Like people, they won't even do clubs during the, you know, pretty much because they're like, everyone's at the festival. So like yeah. they bring in the best people, they rock all summer, all winter, all whatever the, the season is. They circulate, there's people touring all over the place, artists doing collaborations with local artists and, you know, uh, local artists making, building bridges to go to other places. And it's just a great thing that happens. And America is not really like that. There's not like a, I mean, there's, there's big festivals that would go on, but it's more yeah. like a, I don't know if it's because of the, insurance issues i don't know if it's because of some kind of logistics but there's you know there there were certain fest like there was warp tour that went out there was mm -hmm. there's things that went out you know what i mean like i'm not to say that there were there were things that, that that didn't have Lollapalooza or there are things that would definitely happen but i'm talking about europe there's like 20 30 50 festivals a weekend you know you go to certain cities and there's like 10 different festivals going on in the same city this weekend. You know what I'm saying? Like, what do you want to do? You want to go to a food and wine festival, hip hop <laughs> festival, an EDM festival, a mix, a all rock. A, these five are all mixed. You know what I'm saying? Like, and these five are separate. And different. Let's do them. Like you might, you know, so I think that it's just a it's, a, it's a cultural thing. I think America is, it's more about let's set the business. And if the business is right, we'll build the festival. Um, I think in Europe, it's about let's 
festival is going to happen. Like this year it didn't happen. We just, they just canceled a bunch of festivals, but generally the festival is going to happen. Like the people want to come do this. It's part of the, the culture of the people to uh, in the summers to go tour and go see their favorite bands perform. Somebody, their favorite bands are going to be in Europe this summer for the most part. You know what I'm saying? Like that's part, it's just not the same way here. So we, we just moving toward that. I think festival culture is taking off um, as uh, communication is changing, as access is changing, things like this, where we're talking about fest- and driving like, oh, I didn't even know about that. Um, it's, it's changing. And I, I, whenever we do do the, the big shows out here, we ever we do the festivals or the, the big tour festival, things like that, you're talking about Sasquatch or things like that. Mm-hmm it reminds us of being, it's like, these are the things that feel like we're, we're on tour in Europe or on tour in other places where, because usually in the States, it's either you choose, either you're doing a tiny little club or you're doing a mid-sized club. You got, you got like levels that you got to go in Europe. It's like, let's just rock. Like, you know what I mean? Like you might be on the small stage, the main or main stage. You might be in the DJ tent, but no matter what, it's going off. Like it's popping. So yeah. Yeah. Talk about that. I mean, well, it's, it's interesting because there has been, there was a surge of destination festivals. That was, you know, up until this whole pandemic, people were like, oh, I'm, I'm going to Costa Rica for this right. event. I'm going to, you know, Europe for a festival. And right. that was the next surge. And it'll, it'll get back there, you know what I mean? But um, talk about, you just mentioned, oh, it doesn't matter if it's 250,000 people at this, at this stage, a um, thousand people, uh, because there are certain artists who were really looking forward to this season as their breakout season, right? And then now this happens, uh, right. they're staying at home. What are kind of the words of wisdom to them uh, in regards to just, you know, being able to still move forward, whether it's it, with their careers? Because that's kind of like a buzzkill when you, you know, uh, yeah. are so excited and then this happens. Sure. No, I would just tell artists that um, this is the time to, to recognize this is not anything personal. Um, this isn't about bad business. Um, this is a, a global issue. This is something that me that I've toured and as an artist on stage run a booking agency and booked many other groups for a long time I've never dealt with. This is a little tiny clause, force majeure, act of God, a little tiny thing that's usually at the bottom of contracts and nobody ever has to deal with because how many global pandemics are there? You know what I mean? Like how, 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 what are the odds that a giant, you know, uh, act of some sort sort of giant uh, catastrophic event is going to happen in this city at this time on the day of the, it's very, you know, the odds are, are that you're going to be fine. And in my experience, not to say I haven't had festivals canceled because of issues before. I've been through terrorist attacks, bombings, riots, regime changes. You know what I mean? Like we've been, we've seen all kinds of things touring the world, but um, this situation is um, this situation is a little bit is a little bit different because you have people that there was no real warning. It wasn't like we had, there, there was a chance, like contracts were signed and then all of a sudden the festival wasn't happening. You had people that had been canceling other things to gear up for this, that had been saving up the gear, spent their money on non-refundable airline tickets and whatever to get the best rate to get their whole team out. People that had just landed out there to make money and then the, the tours are, you know, the tour. So what I would say, as I was saying, it's not personal, it's not bad business. What you can do right now, the only thing you can do right now is recognize the state of things. This is what's happening. What what are the other tools that are at my that I have access to? Mm-hmm. Maintain your relationships with the promoters because they're going through it too. And the people that are giving them the most grief, unless you're at the top of the charts and they can't help but to book you, they're gonna definitely remember the people that were like, yo, I got you, bro, whatever, man. Like whatever we could yeah. do, I understand. Like, um, connect with your people because there are people if you were going out there to perform and you got booked that was because somebody figured out that you had some people there that like that were interested in seeing you or that, that would be interested in, in having you come rock so make sure you stay in the, in this time in touch with those people and let them know like yo we're not we're not there for this but yo here's what i am doing here's a new song check this out i'm in my garage here's my i'm, I'm rapping i'm freestyling acapella in my car you know what i mean just to let you know like it's all love like not to say that you have to you know over over uh, extend yourself in that way because it is business but just understand that if, if that's what you want to do, if this is your chance and you need to build that bridge and the other side of the bridge isn't there, then it's all about uh, maintaining and surviving right now, whatever that energy, you know, continuing that energy. And the best way to do that is to make sure that you, 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 you're walking with the right energy and that you have contextualized what's going on properly. You're not looking at this as somebody doing you dirty or doing you any kind of way or you getting jerked by the industry like 
you know, this is, you know, don't, you know, this is, this is business. Like things yeah. happen and sometimes people get caught in the middle. Like airlines, airlines shut down and they still have people stranded in random countries that yeah. they can't connect to a flight. Like, you know what I'm saying? They're in there. And so this is, I would just say, yeah, just stay connected with the promoters, stay connected with the local press, stay connected with your local fan bases, stay connected with the people that are con- trying to connect with you and people are reaching out to show love and show support and say they understand, then show them love and support and thanks and appreciation for that understanding. If people are looking out, trying to put it on you and blame you in a public forum, you get an opportunity at that point to in a public forum without just throwing anybody on the bus saying, hey, this has nothing to do with us. Mm-hmm. Um, this is about, this is how it goes. There's a force majeure clause in the contract that says there's certain things that will automatically cause the concert to be canceled and there will be no payments or deposits or anything else. And if the, if this happens, you got to send the deposit back because this isn't the promoter doing bad business where you get to keep the deposit. So you put your name on the bottom of the contract. That's what it is. So I would just say, yeah, be cool about it as much as possible. It's I mean, obviously it's, it's easy for me to say that, but be as cool about it as possible. Be as optimistic about it as possible in the sense of understanding that, you know, you know God willing, this thing's going to turn around. And when it does, there are going to be certain people that are going to be a pleasure to work with. You know, for people that, and so just make yourself that, and maybe, you know, you get to, you know, get pulled out the line into the short line in the queue and and get back to where you want it to be. But the main thing is stay, stay working on your craft, keep creating and, and, and even take more time to engage your base when you can't physically, you know, uh, deal, when you're not gonna be able to be in the same physical space, take more time to engage them where they are, which may be on social media or wherever the case may be. Yeah, and we're, we're all in this together. You know, everyone's Absolutely. going through it. So you're not the only artist going through it. You're not the only creative going through it. This everyone's- isn't the only country going through it. This isn't the only genre going through it or style of music or whatever you do. It's not underground rappers or dance hall DJ. Whatever. It's not It's not everybody, the whole world. Like, you know, and you could call any corner of the world, everybody's dealing with, like the festivals that just got canceled for me. One was in England and one was in Switzerland. Yeah. It had nothing to do with what's going on in California. So the whole world, is 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 dealing with the same thing and so don't take it personally because if you do you're going to short circuit your ability to navigate it with a clear head you're going to be moving narcissistically you're going to be moving like this is about me they did this to me mm-hmm. and unless you're trying to say they they you know there's a, a complete global pandemic that's there to stop you from performing at at hip-hop camp in the czech republic this year or something like that unless that's what you're what you're trying to make it out to be then there's no reason to, to go down that that path just stay connected with the right people stay connected with the people that got you booked for that in the first place Stay connected with your base that was you were gonna try to connect with when you got there, and just keep doing good music, good, keep making good um, good music or doing good work, whatever you do. Yeah, and then you'll be out there. It's, the opportunity will come, and you'll sure. be ready for the opportunity. Sure, um, and you'll be more seasoned and be better and be, be better connected and have better relationships with promoters and the fans and have more work and everything else. When you get there, it won't be like, okay, what we were trying to do last year, let's do it now. Be like. What you're trying to do last year, it's even better now. Let's do it for real. Like, you know what I mean? It's a different energy, a different perspective. Yeah. And um, just putting it out there. Some people might say, oh, but it's it's easier said than done. But if you if you care enough, you're going to do that, right? If you care enough, you're going to do that. And also, um, let's, let's talk about that. Let's talk about being able to put one foot in front of the other and find a way to move forward. Because as I mentioned, you know, and we spoke about it earlier, a lot of passing of, of artists, you know, young young icons, young artists that were destined to already becoming stars and blowing up. And then you wake up one day and, you know, you hear the news. Right. Talk about that. Just, you know, as someone that I'll look at, you know, you're on, you're in the Yoda seat now. Uh, <laughs> giving back and, and, and to the young Jedi. What would right. you say, man? Because honestly, it, it's tough. You know, you no, get- it's, it's especially tough when like, when I know those people, you know what I'm saying? Like, these are people like, like I remember, like you know, you start looking at your old text messages, and it's like, man, this is a man, like real, like the, and, you know, and, and you know, when you when you're in the business, in the entertainment business, you know, you develop a lot of acquaintances, some some friends, but a lot of acquaintances, because you're seeing a lot of people, a lot regularly. You're in the same circles. People are talking about the same people, especially when you come from a certain era. There wasn't the access to be in the scene that there is now. There wasn't there weren't these type of opportunities to do this. There wasn't, um, you know, the you, now you could pretty much write a record, make the beat, record the song, add scratches, mix, master it, distribute it, pay people and get paid from your cell phone if you want to, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Or, or, and then do a podcast, film of your music videos, 
invest in stocks and make a phone call. You know what I'm saying? Like you can do all that in your pocket now. Like you don't have to bring it, but no one has to co-sign you. No one has to do any of that. So mm-hmm. uh, coming from the era that I came from, there was a lot more people, there were a lot less people. And so you were, the people that you did come in contact with, there was a maybe a little bit of a, a deeper connection with, because you knew what it took to get into the same space right then. It wasn't just ingenious movement or luck or whatever the case might be. Like you had to navigate, usually had to navigate some things mm-hmm. to get there. So as I'm looking at, you know, um, people from various generations, various styles, I wake up, you know, I get a sinking, I wake up and I see like two or three posts of somebody's face on Instagram or Twitter or something, you know what I'm saying? Immediately my heart sinks. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Cause I'm like, ah, uh, and then it's like, please be an anniversary of, an album or it's their birthday or something else. And, you know, it, sometimes it isn't, you know what I mean? And so, you know, I've had some, you know, some, some people that are really good people, um, really, you know, people that I, I would consider to be friends in the industry that have passed away. And even the people that I, I didn't know that have passed away, um, I still feel a certain kinship, a certain camaraderie with, with those people, because I also know what it is to be there and to let, to, to open yourself up to what you open yourself up to as a as a as a hip hop vocal as an MC as a rapper, mm-hmm. um, especially if you decide to speak on things that may be unpopular or may be uncomfortable mm-hmm. or may not be the thing. Because a lot of times people are coming to the to the music to escape from something. Now I think you have a lot of people coming to the music to connect with something. Yeah, and a lot more people. You always had a, you had people on both sides, but I think you have a lot more people. That are like okay now these rappers are talking about me like you know now these rappers are talking about my experience i feel that i'm depressed too i'm sad too or i'm upset too or i'm frustrated too or i'm on on this too or i'm trying to kick that too so when you see these people uh passing away and you see the the, the potential that was there um that's a certain amount of pain but when you see the hold that it leaves in certain people's hearts when those people pass away. And you see that me, I didn't have to get it all. I could take from it what spoke to me and recognize the talent, mm-hmm. but somebody else, he was speaking their story. Somebody else, he was, he was the person that understood them. You know what I mean? Somebody else felt that these people were her. Somebody else felt like these people were like in there, like, yes, finally someone gets me and they're making this music. So when that person dies, especially when it's something that's, I mean, you know, death is generally tragic anyway for people that are mourning the loss, but when it's something that's like a young person that's just fighting demons or OODs or something like the Juice World thing where it's just tragic on a number of levels, you know what I mean? Like just, it, the hole that it leaves, there's no answers. There's no, there, it's like a sit, like it's, it's, it's very different. It's one of those, like a wound that won't always, you know, people, there's certain people that carry wounds for the rest of their life. They never fully heal all the way, you know what I mean? Like they, they gotta go to the doctor every so often to get, and that's what I, when you see that, that's to me equally, if not more heartbreaking, because you get to see that other, just like, you know, you think this person has a family that's really, you know, rest in peace to him, rest in peace to his family. But then there are other people that may even feel more connected with this person, even than that person's family. So you yeah. think about what that person's blood relative might be going through because their brother, their sister, son, daughter, cousin died. But you don't know, you don't know what the relationship is with that person. You just respect the fact that that's their kin, that's their a relative. But these other people aren't blood related to them necessarily. These other people have decided that they're family. They've yeah. invested in a, a, a into a bond with this person, and it's 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 crazy to see those people lose somebody that really meant something to them. Not just their favorite artist or a cool artist or oh what a loss for the culture or whatever. But like, man, the one person that gets me is gone. You know what I mean? Like that feeling right there. Like, and you see that in people's face. Like. That gets me, bro. Like, so when I see these people pass away, like, it's super sad. But when I see, and of course, there's going to be like the, the reactionary, like, oh, they were the greatest. You know, there's going to be certain people, but there's certain people that you could tell, like, it, these people really meant something to these people. This song, this, they got them through some shit. Like, when they were about to do that to themselves, this song was the one that was like, nah, bro, get off the ledge or whatever the case was. You know what I mean? And to me, like, man, that's a heavy, heavy thing right there, man, to, to see. So for those people, man, I just say, like, you know, the truth is still the truth. Like what you found in that, the message is still there. What was left behind was 
that that blueprint or that guide or that that shoulder to lean on or that song now becomes the 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 full representation of that support that that you know what you found is still there but you you know you realize like there's not going to be more of it you know what i mean unless there's a vault that gets unlocked or you know it's unreleased something like there's not going to be more of it so then that makes you have to go back and really read that book again like really go back into the notes really go back word for word and try to you know get deeper because a lot of times people that are writing those records they're just channeling they don't even always know what they're writing isn't you know they, they're just flowing energy and so when they're gone it's if they had to go back and study their own writing as a poet sometimes they'd be like bro i was way well, hey man i was just letting it was just flowing you know what i mean so it's it's for everybody man everyone feels it in a different way but ultimately it's a, it's a, it's very sad when you know people that are really pushing forward and that are that, that connected you know when 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 they're when they go like everyone's got to go that's the only thing promised really but mm-hmm. when it's too soon when it's in the midst of really when you're turning the corner or when you've been on a bunch of bullshit and you're finally ready to turn that corner and you and the people are going with you into this journey towards betterment to great to greater things to to healing to healthy to to yeah i'm not perfect i did a bunch of dumb stuff in the past but here's what i'm doing now i'm learn i learned from that come with me on this journey and people are like all right i'm coming with you on that journey to betterment and then you're gone and now everyone's feeling like disconnected everyone feels like what should we do and so a few people are going to keep forward on that journey a few people are going to be stuck in limbo and a few people are going to go back if not worse and it's just a yeah, man, it's a ripple effect when things like that happen. I don't mean to just get too long, but that was, yeah, that was just. No, that, that's, that, thank you for sharing that. I mean, it's something that every day, you know, listen to the music, you ask yourself the questions. Yeah. And some of the questions are, oh, well, what about the people that were around him? Why weren't they, you know, yeah. making sure that nothing, there was no possibility of anything happening? You know, why this, why, this, why that? It's always easy to point the finger after the fact, right? Um, I mean, yeah, it, it's, it's tough. And, and the thing about festivals, just wrapping it back around and I did have the pleasure of seeing Juice World at Coachella last yeah. year and he had an installation off site mm-hmm. and we stopped by and all that festivals provide that that sanctuary for a lot of people right to escape whatever uh yeah. they're dealing yeah. with for for whether it's one day two days or three days you know and right now people are at home not able to do that and to them that that hurts right. them that makes them you know maybe even depressed um just shed some words of wisdom right. on that because man i mean i know it's hard but if we can get past that everything sure. in life there's everything worth having in life and, and once you get to that state you understand wow i had to overcome something to get there so we're all at home we're right. you know in our fields but we got to understand if we can elevate and show that, that it's just going to bring everything else to another level sure. of understanding and appreciation i think it's just important to recognize that it's not what it was but it is what it is you know um once we, we we understand the reality of what we're dealing with right now, then we can translate that into what we want it to be on a certain level. So we there's not a possibility for us to get, you know, five figures, six figures of people into an open space right now and get some of the best artists in the world to perform on that physical stage for the physical people in the crowd. That aspect of it is not possible. But what is possible is that the global community can be tapped into. What is possible is that in your own space, relative to your own situation, these artists can still be in your living room. These artists can still be doing a special performance for the people that are together, focused at that particular moment for this reason. It's not just about pulling up old videos on YouTube or whatever. Like you can, like you know, um, you know, you talk about Erica. You know, you talk about um, people that were doing it right. Erica Badu's in her bedroom or in her house, going room to room, different styles, different flavors, different guests. You just have to translate it that way. And people are in there, like, I'm looking at my kitchen, dancing going on and cooking and dancing and everything while, while Erica Badu is singing. It's like, it's a different, it's an experience. So at a certain point, the, the, the experience that we're talking about was always going to happen. There was going to be, the technology was going to allow for artists to be able to stream concerts. There's going to be technology to allow for virtual reality concerts. There's going to be things that they, they've already, they're, they're already doing certain things, but there wasn't, a need for it. There was only an opportunity for it before. So it was able to exist in parallel and grow slowly in parallel with traditional performance, traditional concerts, traditional festivals. But the concept of a digital festival or con- or a digital concert, the concept of, of e-commerce being a part of that, the con- these concepts have existed on a certain level for a long time. There was no there was no rush to make them elegant. There was no sense of urgency to make them the way to do it. It was just this is going to be the future. 
you know, we'll take a, one little piece of the market share at a time. Now it pushed that to the forefront. Mm -hmm. So I would just say to the people that are stressed out, just know that we can't stop what's going on on a, on a, on a I guess, a biological level like that. We, we can't stop the, the spread of these things as, as, as artists. That's not what we can, you know, what we can do is put ourselves in a position where we can contribute to combating these things by creating opportunities to share experience still, despite these things. And in a certain way, I guess that means that we are helping to, as artists, combat by creating opportunities where people don't have to choose between their own desires necessarily and doing the right thing. You know, we can we can figure out, it might not be perfect, they might have to compromise a little bit because we all do right now, but we're gonna, relative to what's going on, here's the experience. Relative to what's going on, here's the performance. Relative to what's going on, here's the community. Interact with each other online. Uh, get three or four of your friends together, set up a little situation and you guys sip wine together or pass a joint around and do whatever you do and let's and, and watch this concert together and you guys talk about it and whatever. Just like when you're when you're in high school or whatever, you get on the phone and watch TV together, watch the show together, watch the concert, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, like high school, probably right now. Now, you know what I'm saying? Like, but that same approach, like you just want the experience and the interaction with the people that you want to be around. And those things are technically still available. So focus on what's there. Don't focus on like, and if you need to get out and stretch your legs, then go out, stretch your legs, go into your backyard, go into your front yard, go into your steps, go into the parking lot, whatever, wherever, whatever open space you have, crack a window, take a deep breath, let the sun hit your face and then go get on the thing, get on the, your computer, get on your phone, get on whatever it is that you want to do to go watch and do what you got to do. Hopefully, you know, God willing, this isn't forever, but the people that are communicating, the people that are uh, building those experiential bridges, the artists, um, the, the community organizers, we are all doing our part to provide the best possible version of that experience that we can with the resources and the access and whatever else that we're dealing with right now. And I think that if looked at that way, it will be looked at as like, wow, even though all this stuff is crazy, even though all this stuff is going on in the world, even though they're, they're going to bring the festival to me, they're not going to, it's not, you know, the artists are still going to, we're still going to, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're still, we're still going to be able to interact with our people. We're still, mm -hmm. yes, on a certain level, that is the case. And it isn't because of greed. It isn't because we decided let's shut everybody in and just do it online because this corporation can make more money that way. This is just the state of the world. This is what's going on. We can get into theories and all that other stuff on a different type of conversation, but <laughs> relative to what we, what's being presented, this is the state of the world. And, you know, with that as the, the base that we all move from, the experience is still there. Like, if for anything, sure. people are interacting more online because they're looking for other people that want to share that experience. So tap into the global community, tap in, get an old school pen pal, modern, the, the modern version of an old school pen pal, make a friend, make friends that are based in the things that you want and have something to talk about. So when this thing is over with and you do go to the festival, you have some new people to link with at the festival. Exactly. You know, exactly. Okay. The yeah. What, what do you see for, you know, wrapping things up here? What do you see for the future of music festivals? I know it's a little early, but even right. if it's just a vision that you can, you know, that you have and say, you know what, we are going to be better off for this and it right. might not happen for another year and a half or so, but this is where I see the state of music heading because yeah. you know, you've already seen over the decades the the evolution of music, whether from yeah. hip hop from one genre to another genre to the cross crossing between all of that. Just kind of what's that final positive message looking towards the future of music festivals? What I think is going to happen with music festivals is the technology that was meant to just capture an experience um, is now going to be used to drive the experience. And you're gonna see maybe a little bit less in the way of uh, this, maybe a little smaller scale, especially we're gonna scale up back into that because I mean, the, the, the laws are for the first dictate with the size of the, yeah. mm -hmm. then you gotta get into promoters and get into who's comfortable with what and venue insurance. There's a whole bunch of things that are gonna go into that. But um, the state of things is, always changing. The state of the music business itself has changed. The state of how we get our music has changed. 
how record deals are organized has changed. Like people looking at a CD, like, what is this? Like, you know what I mean? Like, and that made the people looking yeah. at tapes, like what is, and they, the people before that were looking at the eight tracks, like, what is this? Now there's nothing to look at. There's nothing, now it's just data. It's just, you know what I'm saying? Like, and that's all it is. So I think everything is changing. Um, everything's gonna continue to change. It's only constant. Um, and so when we talk about the, the the festival space, what I see is still having festivals, like I said, scaling probably smaller ones, the big starting to scale up. I see them being more um, heavily, uh, I wouldn't say policed per se, but I see them being, they're, they're being more to just, than just getting a ticket and having somebody wind you down for a gun or a knife at the, at the, at the door right away. I think that's gonna be part of it. There's gonna be some sort of, you know, I don't know exactly what it's gonna be, but I think there's gonna be some logistical things that are gonna be in policies. I think there are gonna be policies in place um, to allow for that to be, but what I really think is going to happen is that while people are scrambling to get the live situation together, I think people are going to start becoming more comfortable and more appreciative of some of the the some of the virtual opportunities. Some of the in the same way that people are, are at one point, it's like I'm not trying to get online and share a bunch of my information and talk to a bunch of people I don't know. And then, you know, five years later, you know, the whole world is on social media sharing information with people they don't know in characters and according to parameters and guidelines and everything else. So I think that the state of, of, of the music business is going to be the same, like as there are going to be less opportunities maybe for people to go see live events, but there's still going to be those opportunities, but there are going to be more opportunities for people to see specialized live performances through online platforms through vr platforms um through tiny to through smaller events that are streamed like they would stream boxing matches back in the days and and into different spaces into people's homes pay-per-view i think i see a lot of pay-per-view i see a lot of streaming um i see a lot of and then on the business side um there's obviously going to be cross brand there's going to be a lot of uh things flashing across screens mm -hmm. a lot of product placements in the backgrounds a lot of cool things happening on that level um uh, sponsored streams uh, sponsored artists yeah absolutely Di a different pair a different whole different model of 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 uh record deal you, you're, you're probably going to see you know that whole those those types of deals like the live the big live nation deals or those big you know eight nine figure deals happening for artists to go out and go tour and they, they do a partnership jay-z did one i'm sure uh, not too long ago um i think they're going to be certain deals like that like we're going to do 10 streaming concerts this year you know, we got to do something unique for each one. It's, I think it's just going to be, it's just people want different things. Nobody, you know, in the same way that people wanted live streams and wanted to be able to get song for song and just play what they want to hear and not have to buy the album. Uh, the same way that people uh, didn't want to go to the video store anymore and wanted to get their videos online and then wanted to be able to binge and watch it at their pace. Yep. And it's counterintuitive, I guess, um, to what the industry would have thought at that time which was that if you let people binge they're going to get the whole thing over in a week and you're not going to have anything else to show and you're going to lose the customer that didn't happen you know what i'm saying like it changed the way people took in media so i think presented the right way there's just going to be a paradigm shift and there'll be people that are nostalgic and there'll be people that'll be able to go see live events but for the masses for whatever you know it could be anything for financial reasons to access to what anything else. a lot of these venues there you that you would have gone to see the people at live yeah, they're not going to be there in a couple of weeks. Anyway, they're gone. They're over. It's over. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like they're holding on. They're 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 playing profit margins every week anyway. So you get them. They can't throw a concert in there for two, three months, a year. Like, like not a, not all of them can survive that. So it's going to be limited anyway. But I think it's just going to be a paradigm shift. I think to be honest, more people are going to get used to, and find find it convenient and comfortable and cool to be able to say, oh, so and so is doing a concert right now. Let me go on. Just like you go watch, I don't know, presidential debates or the or the or the NFL draft or something. It's like a big event that people are polarized. You know, the the Olympics or whatever the case is. It's gonna be, you know, maybe I shouldn't, you know, not everything is that big, but you get my point. Like people are gonna be mobilized to watch a certain thing at a certain time. If they, you know, it'll be it could be done very cheaply. Like you know, you can get a million people pay, have them spend a dollar each, and that's great. You don't have to spend get a you know a hundred thousand people to spend twenty dollars each. You know what I mean? Like it's a it's the whole business model is gonna shift. But I think people are going to get more and more used to it. Artists are going to get more and more used to it. There's going to be a whole crop of artists that are going to get uh, left behind because they're dinosaurs. There's going to be a whole crop of artists that would have never, ever had a chance to make it because of the way the old system worked that are suddenly going to get a boost and be able to have a platform to, to move from. And that's going to bring new energy and new flavor to the scene. Yep. So 
I mean, as, as, as scary and uncomfortable it is, as things are on a certain level, um, it's also really interesting. And, you know, I'm, 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 I'm excited about certain things. I'm excited to see how, because, you know, you're, you're talking about, you know, a hammer, you could build with it, a hammer, you could destroy with it. Like it's a tool. Right. What are we, you know, what are people going to do with these tools? They have traditionally, these tools were being used primarily to support old models. Yeah, it's up to us, you know, um, yeah, new yeah. opportunities. The paradigm Absolutely. shift is here and leave it to the creatives, leave it to the collective conscious to to create. That's that's what will happen. We will come up with ways cool. and find ways. And we just right now have to either enjoy the ride, enjoy, you know, what, what we've gone through and experienced in regards to the right. evolution. Uh, as he mentioned, CDs are you know, I show my sister, little sister a CD. She's like, what's that? And that's a yeah. whole story, right? He mentioned, uh, we, you know, being a green coaster. You're supposed to put my drink on that? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. exactly. There's, there's beauty in that because now we get to sit down and have this, you know, experience where I'm sharing information with you. And, and the only way to do that right. is the griot route, the storytelling route. And, um, right. you know, so that's what we just got to take from it and understand that it's, it's life. It, it goes in these waves that ebb and flows and it, it leaves off, it brings other opportunities. So, um, sure. you know, Raka, how, how can we kind of stay in touch? Just, you know, whether with you, uh, show our thanks, uh, what's next. And man, we really appreciate oh, yeah, yeah. having you on the festivals. I appreciate it, man. I mean, I, I really like what, what, you, uh, what you guys are doing there. Um, I, the people that I, that I've been talking to about it are also very excited about it. Um, um, they're very excited about you personally, about Festi as a, as a, as a platform and as a, as a, uh, as a hardware and as a platform. I think that there's a, there's a, a lot that, that there's there that's there. And especially if you're doing what I, what I'm being told that you're doing in my understanding, which is even to think beyond that and look at the other opportunities, yeah. both with the community and possibly even with the hardware for making, for solving other problems that maybe weren't even, didn't even necessarily need to be solved before people were happy to do it a, a certain way. Maybe there's a way to optimize that and make it even more efficient using the things that are here. So um, I just want you to know, man, I appreciate the, um, you know, the drive, the determination, the focus. I mean, you know, you focus the light into a laser beam, you know what I mean? Like, I think that that's, that's what I see here. And um, that's going to be something that's going to be very important to have platforms like this, to have the type of energy that's like this, to have people that are thinking outside the box to create uh, stability for people in the space um, and opportunity for the space to continue. You know, this is very, very important. So whatever I can do to support this, you already know what it is. It's, it's all family. Um, as far as dilated, uh, this is actually the 20 year anniversary of the platform. Uh, May 23rd was supposed to be the, is actually the anniversary date. Um, we just canceled that show because the, the theater is not, we can't book any shows. So we're going to be doing some things like that next year. I think next year is uh, the 20 year anniversary of expansion team. So but, but for that one, we got to do a special festy event or do something like that. I don't know if we'll be ready in the next two, two or three, two weeks, three weeks, but we'll definitely be ready for the next go round and we'll be ready to make it happen. But that's what it is, man. Just, you know, um, staying busy with that. Um, I have some tech platforms that I've been working on in a heavy space. You can go to panoply, uh, panoplybpo.com, panoplybpo.com and check that out. Um, all my social medias are pretty much at the real Raka, R-A-K-A-A. So you can check me out there. But otherwise, man, I'm you know I'm just around, man. I, I build bridges. This is I, I I just work with my family. Like I don't like I I'm just I, you know we live day to day and we just make it happen. And you know I you know create opportunities and creating opportunities for other people um, and building bridges for other people. You know I find myself connected as well. So you know it's a it's a great thing. And um, like again, I appreciate what you got going on over there. And I'm looking forward to, you know, we'll, you know, we'll definitely be in touch. We've been in touch. We'll, we'll definitely continue to be in touch. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I really see an opportunity there. And um, the, the pivot that was made, not even the pivot, but the, op the opening to the, 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 the new state of things and how what you're doing could apply without shutting down panicking and crawling into a corner of your shower and letting the hot water fall on you. Like yeah. we, without doing all that, like you wouldn't have said, all right, well, cool. Well, you know, we were here to do this particular thing, but as this happens, now we see that we can also do these other things or we have an opportunity or maybe it feels like a certain responsibility or whatever it is, but the access is there and it's good to see you taking advantage of that or, 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 or using those proper, those things properly to, to push this forward. I think this is important because there is a festival community. There are people, there's a global, there's a festival, not just there's a hip hop community and an EDM community and a this community or that community. 
but there's a festival community. There are people who like work nine months out of the year so they can go back, you know, gig around for three months out of the year. And this is what they look forward to. This is their whole life. And coming up on a summer when everything that they have been, you know, is now canceled, like it's important to have these things up and running and be able to create opportunities uh, to kind of give people a little something so that they, you know, they, they can stay connected as well. So I, I appreciate this and I appreciate the, you know, the, the, the talk going into some very important things like mental health and, and just overall people's feeling and, um, and, you know, what's going on with a lot of the, you know, the younger rappers are, are overdoing it. Um, a lot of them and, you know, not, not, and that's it, but as you can see by the, the type of people that have passed away, but at the same time, the older rappers overdid it in their own way. And they're paying for it right now. So even though they're not ODing on this thing in per, per se, their bodies have completely broken down. Their health issues are crazy. And they're like 50 years old. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like they could technically be like at a halfway point in their life. And they're looking at the end of it right now because of the things, because of the, maybe it wasn't lean. Maybe it was too many bottles of Hennessy and, and dirty blunts or whatever the case was, whatever, whatever happened to be the, the thing that they were into, like it's catching up to them too. So health, mental health, health, physical health, um, just generally just tr understanding that, you know, we have responsibility to ourselves to be healthy and to make this the world that we want to live in. Like, I think that's going to carry us a long way. And festivals were, were just one of the most beautiful vehicles for bringing people together in one space and having everybody united for the cause of uh, of having a good time and, and communicating and celebrating. And I think that there's still that opportunity, maybe even more than ever, because people are being forced to kind of slow down, take stock of their lives and communicate with them, with their with themselves with their families with their neighbors with different you know with different people at a different level than they had before when it was when everything was going at a different pace so i appreciate you guys man and there's gonna be more more for sure like i i'm, I'm glad you're setting up for for waves to come instead of instead of worrying about you know what adjustment needs to be made to the original business plan for sure 100 percent, 100 percent. you just said it i mean there there is more to come the festival community is it's a large community we're all connected and, and that's yeah. why we just have to look forward and understand that right now is a, a big reflection reflection period. Right. Assess how we're gonna how we're gonna make things better, right? Because right. even with Festi, it's like, okay, well, are we gonna be done or not? That that was really the first question. Are, are, right. Are, and not real, and, and it's almost rhetorical because right. it's not right. gonna be done. You know, you're of not course. gonna if, if you're moved by music, moved by stories, moved by these inspiring personalities, <laughs> you're not gonna stop because sure. You know, you're almost paying homage to them. No, I would never, you know, I have a, I love Kobe Bryant. I model so much of my approach, you know, and when I made that transition from, we call it hardwood, basketball, yeah. hardwood to hardware, yeah. to nasty, hardwood to hardware, yeah. I'm like, no, I'm just going to, I'm still playing basketball. It's just going to look a different way. Yeah. It's going to be in this, in this technology space, but I'm still playing basketball. And I'm still, you know, yeah. transfer everything. You're playing the same learned. principles. Yeah. So yeah, hey, you're, hey, you're, do, you're still doing your thing, you know, shout sure. out to Highlighted People, 20 years, yeah, thank you, you know, man. 20 thank years. You. Yeah, uh, shout out to my man, Evidence too, of course, he's doing his thing. My man, DJ Babu, world famous B-Junkies, he got the B-Junkie Institute of Sound, which is like an incredible DJ academy in um, Glendale, California, something like LA. Um, uh, yeah, let's talk about that real quick. Yeah, right? the B-Junkie yeah. iOS is the B-Junkie Institute of Sound, uh, Babu, Rhettmatic, Mr. Chalk, Shortcut, who else is over there, uh, Melody. Uh, my man C. Los is over there doing his thing. Um, yeah, it's it, it's a full full time academy. They have um, what well, they have like forty. I don't know how many. They, I'm probably saying the wrong number. They got like a, like a, like a, like a stage in the front, turntable set up like for 30, 40 kids. They have a whole battle octagon thing set up on the other side. It's a it's a retail space. They do like little block party events there and special things. Um, I think they're this is their third or I think this is their third year this year. And so like yeah, the Beat Junkie Institute of Sound or uh, BJ iOS, I think it's called B Junkie Institute of Sound. Um, definitely check that out. They do some really, really cool things. A lot of community programs, youth programs, private lessons, like all kind of stuff is cool. Yeah, that that's been a new wave that's come out. You know, where in the past, you know, it's funny. Okay, I'll share a quick story. So my dad was a oh, he used to DJ. You know, he was okay. a former DJ, just local. But uh, I just I still have vivid memories of him doing the turntables on Sundays and X Y Z. So I took this down to, to where he lives. He lives out, out in Ontario uh -huh. and um, set it up and I was showing him and I was like, hey, you know, and he's like, well, I'm, you know, just give me, you just, he, he's used to turntables, yeah. and microphone, right? Yeah. But uh, I'm like, well, this is the new way. And then he started playing around with it and it was interesting because he was showing me 
I was showing him how to how to beat match, yeah. but I was using wave patterns. Yeah. And he's like, well, back in my day, we we don't have wave patterns. Yeah, yeah so, exactly. It's so it's cool, yeah, <laughs> to see that like the, up, new, yeah. the new wave and, and how people are, are are able to go to institutions to learn how to DJ. Right. Um, you can still learn the old fashioned way. Sure. There's so many ways to get it, and that just shows that like it's not one way better than another way. Right. It's just, appreciating all the different forms and what you have is a lot of in in the at the bjng academy you have a lot of uh, what i saw was there were a lot of like um, club djs edm style djs that would go there because they wanted to learn not how to spin a different kind of music but wanted to learn the technical skill of turntablism because as a dj that's cool that just wasn't the focus like they're spinning beat they're rocking the crowd but who do, if you're on turntables you put on your head for whatever, who doesn't want to be able to do it? Like, you know, like, not to say that's what you do, but at least to be able to do it. Like, that's crazy. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I think a lot of them are there like, yo, this is fun. Let me learn this skill, even though I'm not going to use it at my job. I'm not going to use it at my gigs per se. Maybe I'll use a little, maybe I'll use a little bit of like a quick beat juggle that I learned. And then people won't, but some other DJ will be like, ah, okay. I see that. Okay. So, you know, I think it's cool to see people going to different places to learn different things to add to their repertoire, knowing what they want to do, but knowing that you can learn a lot of di different things from any, like going back to martial arts, like it's just cross training. Like you might be a grappler, but you might want to, if you're going to go into MMA, you might want to go get your hands right. Go train with some boxers and some Muay Thai guys and vice versa. You could be a really nice stand up, but if you're going to go do something that somebody has the legal, can legally take you down or you're worried about what happens possibly in the streets or anything like, like that, then you might want to go hit a jujitsu, a, a, a BJJ gym, a, 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 you know, situation yeah. of a group, a gym, a dojo, whatever you want to call it, and take a, some Gracie Jiu Jitsu, some Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, some some Tenth Planet, something. You know what I mean? To get your <laughs> get your get your your ground game right. So yeah. I'm so I'm so I'm um basically uh uh you know just saying that you know it's good to see and over there you get a chance to really see good people adding to their to their tool set, to their skill set in a non judgmental situation. It's not like, oh you're not even a hip hop DJ. Why would you be here? It's like Let's show you some things. Let's. What do you do? Let, they do like an assessment. Like, what are you into? Okay, cool. You're good. Okay, cool. Here's this. Here's that. What do you want to learn? Beat juggling. You want to learn scratching. You want to learn this. You want to learn that. And then, and it's basically like, yeah, judgment free zone. Like, come here and learn. And I think that is what the strength of the beat. Like, they're some of the best that have ever touched turntables as far as turntable skills. You know, like doing what they do. But they're very open to the fact that a they don't know everything themselves because they don't do everything themselves. Even though in their crew there's a wide spectrum of different styles and everything, um, they don't know everything. They, they're still learning every day. And two, that other people that are coming there aren't are, that are coming there are coming there to learn. They're not coming there to be judged on where they come from or yeah. anything like that. They're coming there to learn and to to better themselves. And they embrace that. Like, they don't have any problem with that. They're not like, all right, well, if you can't, okay, go ahead and do the cut from, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you can't do this Gangstar scratch pattern that Premier did, then we're not going to teach you. Like, it's nothing like that. Like, you know what I mean? There's like, it's a very open, like, oh, like, here's the fundam, here's how to scratch. Here's the fundamentals of transforming or of orbitals or whatever the different things are. Like, they're teaching you the technical things and you can practice and you can implement those things into your set or do what you want to do or just do it for fun on Saturday day, during the day and then a Saturday night pull out your crates and go rock the party and, and, and spin the party like exactly party might not want to hear you scratch all over the thing all night you know what I'm like they might actually want to listen to music and might want to just dance and might not be interested in your turntable as routine so you have to you know if you want to be a complete full well-rounded dj um, and be able to do any scene then you just have to find a judgment-free zone where you're actually going to learn and be comfortable practicing and being like i don't know even if i'm very famous and popular doing one thing I don't know anything about this thing and not have it be like, you know, like you feel like, you know, someone's looking at you different. It's like, Oh, what's your name? We'll teach you this and you'll be even more deadly. Like that kind of thing. It's that kind yeah. of approach. So, yeah. And, and you just mentioned judgment free zone. I feel like that is what music festivals are. Music festivals are judgment free zones. Yeah. You go there, show up, have a good time. Like, and that, that's really it. So it's great that they're literally incorporating that, that characteristic and that, you know, sure. uh, well-known, uh, mannerism of, of, of music festivals so um and so if you're Absolutely. at home creating tap into your creative side everyone's staying at home do yeah. it and, and have no judgment on yourself just do yeah. it to explore yourself and, and you know you will be better and glad that you did it you know be, whether whatever happens right whether i decide hey i want to try to be on you know dilate peoples i'm ready for my chance i'm ready for my <laughs> or if it's just retired right now he's a teacher now you never know. <laughs> you know so it's just just having fun with it uh, um very last thing raka uh, just share with us 
one vivid, funny, or cool, uh, memorable music festival experience um, that you, you know, that you've uh, got to experience? Oh, man. Uh, let's see here. A good music festival experience. I, I, I would probably say, like, it was just a real powerful situation. So uh, Woodstock, Poland, the people I was, I was doing the booking at the time, yeah. and they reached out. They were like, yo, we've never had a rap group perform here before. Not, not in, of course, in Poland, but at Woodstock, Poland, at this group. Yeah. It's like, it's always been rock. They're like, we had one rapper come on as like a guest of like another rock group one time. And then we've had like a couple DJs in the past that have done like a couple like warm up sets or like pre parties or after parties or, you know, whatever. But we've never had a rap group on, on our main stage at Woodstock, Poland, the rock festival, pretty much. I'm like, all right. So they're like, we want dilated people. Like you want dilated peoples to come christen hip hop at Woodstock, Poland. They're like, we love you. They've they, they, they seen a bunch of our festival shows on, you know, they did their research. They were looking at, at video of us performing at other festivals and other things. They knew we could rock a festival. It wasn't like we had a hot song, but we did, you know, we worked on the world, but this was recent, pretty recent. So it wasn't like we had a hot new song or we were the hot darling of the media or anything. We just knew how to rock a festival and they wanted somebody that it wasn't contingent on upon their, their, the notoriety in the area. They didn't have to have a hot song for the crowd. The crowd wasn't expected to know hip hop. So putting a, a pop in hip hop, art, the new young hip hop artist on there wasn't, they wanted someone that could rock the show. They called us, we did, we, we, we agreed to it. Um, I remember driving into the thing, like it was so crowded. They had to bring in like, they had to, told us to wait. They had to bring in two police cars to like break through the crowd, like with our van, two, two in back of us, two in front of us and make everyone get out. It was one of those kind of festivals. You know, 10 minutes to finally, once we got on land of driving 10, 15 minutes to get to the stage and we get there and we're told it's over 200,000 people out there that had never, that weren't there to see hip hop. You know what I mean? Like it's one of, in Poland, you know what I'm saying? So we're like, all right, let's see how this goes. So Ev is backstage. He's like, yo, B, what did you get us into? You know what I mean? Like he said, we're listening to a rock group go off. Like they're going crazy. The crowd's going crazy. And we're supposed to follow this, this whatever this, I forget the, what group was it? New Found Glory. I forget the, what group it was, but it was like a group that, Whatever it was, they were like, they had had a huge rock hit right there. We're like, why are we even going on after them? Like, it was one of those type of things, right? Ev is like, man, I'm like, I just, I just remember telling him, like, yo, we're going to be fine. Worst case, this thing's going to be over in about 45 minutes. They only, we're only doing like a 45 minute set at this festival. Worst case, it'll be over in an hour. You know what I'm saying? Like, just hold on tight, bro. Like, it's a, like a flight with turbulence, bro. We'll be all right. You know what I'm saying? Like, we'll be all right. So we, we go out to the stage. Everything is tense. The crowd's still buzzing off this other thing. We get to the side of the stage, we look out there and we can't see the back of the crowd. Wow. Like it's too many people. It's like when they say be farther than the eye can see, like it, we saw people and then it merged into this look, it looked almost like like dust, like a haze or a fog of just, but you could tell it was more people. Like, you know what I'm saying? And then you could see like little towers popping up. So you could see it was going further and further. It was the illest shit. So we get on, drop the first beat and the crowd goes, stupid i mean crazy like we next thing you know it was like one of the best shows we had ever done they say it was with the, the owner of the whole festival came out on stage with us he broke out like this is one of the illest things ever like it was like we can't believe it thank you like you just broke it in and that was probably what it was because we got a chance to go do something that hadn't been in, in recent you know like it's not like this 84 and we're going to you know 80 you know whatever we're going to a place that had, like we're talking about like this like four years ago or something you know what i mean like something like that this is like relatively recent for us to go someplace that wasn't a hip hop that had never had that had never hosted a hip hop event to go in there as us not having not being a multi platinum pop rap group or anything like that like going in there doing what we do going on the main stage at what is is the biggest rock concert in Europe and destroy like killing it like to the point where they were like yo what we didn't expect like like that was that was and we've done you know we we know we come to do but when when it's when it's a situation where we have to build a new bridge or something like that like that situation you never know how it's gonna go so yeah that it just went it went crazy and that it turned out to be the biggest show we've ever done and one of our favorite shows that we've ever done and so the the energy backstage after the show was completely different than the energy going in before the show. It's one of the like, woo, high five. Everyone's like, yeah, yeah, sir. Blah, 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 it's all great. You know what I'm saying? Like it's one of those days. But, crazy. Yeah, man. That was that's probably what it was though, just to be able to go in there and build that bridge and bring 
bring hip hop to a, like something that's been going on since the seventies. Uh, I think 79 or something is when they started that. Something that's been going on since the seventies um, without hip hop, even through all the big groups and everything else, even as big as dilated is in Poland on the hip hop level, that festival wasn't about that. That was, that's not what it was for. And so to, to the point that we made when we started this whole thing, like, you know, it's one of those things where they opened it up and the people were ready. When they opened it up, the people responded. And then the next year they were calling me like, can you help us book Jurassic Five? Can you help us book? Yes. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know who else ended up going, but I was building bridges for them to talk to other people because they were like, we need the right groups, but the right groups will work here. You know what I mean? And so that just brought hip hop to a 30 year old rock festival. Just, but we had to show and prove. And you know, I don't mind that. I don't mind showing and prove. And I'd rather show and prove and break it that way than get paid a gang of money up front and it doesn't go right and it's a problem and this whole thing, it becomes like something that reflects on the culture and ability to book other people later. It's amazing, that's amazing. Well, we'll end it there. That's a great story to end it. <clears throat> there it is, everybody. Rocka Iris Science from yes, Dilated man. Peoples. My name is Desmond Barristain, CEO and founder of Festi. Thank you for joining the Festi Files, Rocka. Thank Peace, you, love, unity, and respect. Until next time, festival community, we out.